hello everyone in tonight's video I'm going to talk about flies that uh, one of my viewers sent to my email and I have to say that I'm really really impressed by these flies uh, for several reasons first of all because they're good flies really good flies and uh, second of all and I'm, I'm not sure is it uh, would this be a first and most important reason or not but like uh, the viewer is 18 years old. His name is Alexander and he's from Belarus and he's been tying and uh, Fishing fly fishing for seven months Well because he sent this uh, three months ago. It's ten months now, but it's less than a year and Let's see his work um, So let's go. I'll, I'll say something about each one of those six patterns that he sent and I hope you can learn something from this or maybe have some different insight uh, but uh, most importantly uh, this is kind of a shout out for him uh, to continue doing what he's doing because it's just amazing so first fly is my favorite fly to fish with and obviously he likes it too and it's a pheasant tail it's classic it has a very nice short tail not too rich and by that I mean not too many barbs including the tail looks like three four barbs that's it then notice the ribbing he went um, well he went a little bit different than I would do but this is also good uh, but he avoided the tail in, in that's very important so he, first he went under the hook from behind and then over without touching the tail which in result gave him this nice straight tail that's not bent to any side then ribbing it's very nicely spaced very even perfect and uh, body is well done of course uh, nice little thorax not too big which goes all the way to the beat without uh, whip finish being noticed not a big deal but like aesthetically it's very pleasing to see such a fly uh, what I would also emphasize here, and it's a very important thing to know, is that when you're making tapered pheasant tail and you want a little bit thicker body towards the bead, be careful not to make too thick whip finish, meaning that your whip finish shouldn't be in line with tungsten. It should be uh, more narrow, not the same width as or diameter as tungsten, because when you fish with trout, trout can slice down the bead with its teeth and just cut through your wood finish and it, it's not very pleasant to have a uh, fly unraveled in the middle of fishing. Now next fly would be hare's ear. Again, perfect little fly. Uh, I can't add anything or remove anything here, it's just perfect. He even whip finished with, uh, with dubbed thread meaning that he hit his whip finish it's not visible the only thing I prefer um, and it's not done here is uh, soft hackle legs or CDC legs just because of more movement that's it um, bead color is very important here because it's one of those colors that uh, work most of the time like my preferred color would be silver and copper and this kind of pink when those two are not working as they should so this is my ace from the sleep color let's call it like that now third fly i'm going fast because like there is not much thing uh, not many things to say about it now third fly uh it's a caddis fly and this caddis fly is just simply amazing uh i love everything about this fly even this detail that he had added those uh, antennas that are not important at all but it's a nice touch and um, what I would like to do here I would just extend wings a little bit a little bit we all know that caddis flies they have those wings that are pro quite longer than body and also CDC wings if they are longer they would support our fly a little bit better of course if you want to make smaller fly on larger hook then you should make wings shorter because overall footprint that wings are leaving on the surface is what actually gives the size of the fly to the fish it's not the size of the hook that we are using it's the footprint that uh, gives the impression of the size to the fish so 
this is actually small uh, smaller fly tied on a larger hook so that also can be a really good good thing to do because obviously larger hook can uh, support bigger fish now this is one of the, my patterns uh, ant i mean alexander tied it it's an ant what i like about this fly is two very distinct uh, segments abdomen and thorax uh, what two things I would do differently here is I would tie abdomen so the rear part with something that's more compact kind of dubbing or thread or whatever because as such would penetrate water more easily this is curved hook which means that abdomen is supposed to be submerged a bit uh, if you have hairy abdomen like here it can stay on the surface I mean it will catch fish obviously but mm, I think it's better if it's submerged a little bit uh, simulating that ant now wings they could be a little bit longer and I would add two strands of flesh from each side of the wings that are tad uh, longer than the wings itself uh, so it, it actually can imitate that flashy uh, reflective thing that uh, ants have on, have on their wings uh, that would be it. This is a very good pattern as well. Uh, let's go to the next one. So this is obviously some generic black nymph. Looks a little bit robust, heavy. Uh, obviously, the jig of tungsten used here is pretty heavy for the hook, which I like. Because if you're fishing in some um, deeper or faster spots or both, uh, heavy nymph is something that you want. In that regard, I would also say that this nymph could be a little bit slimmer because it would increase the sink rate. But if you have some chubby, uh, robust nymphs down there, then this silhouette is also good. Uh, you can't go wrong with dark nymphs, especially if the water is a little bit stained or muddy. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't change much here. It's like buggy, nicely tapered not many things i would i would change here honestly it's also a very good fly and uh, the last one and this is going to be the fly to that i will tie obviously not the same one uh, but this style of flies it's shuttlecock emerger he used i would say rooster stripped rachis or quill if you wish uh, although rachis is more accurate uh, so you take just plain cheap rooster feather you strip the barbs, you get left with a rachis. You may or may not soak it in water to make it make it more pliable and just wrap it as body, as you can see. It can give you a nice, nice taper. Uh, he used some kind of, I would say, rabbit or squirrel dubbing for thorax and obviously some cream CVC for the wings. Amazing emerger pattern. Uh, which will work anywhere on the world in the world like literally anywhere this can work like whatever fish is eating some dry flies or transitional forms like emergers this is going to catch the fish uh what i like about this also is the color of the cdc because this is more visible than the plain natural gray color this cream color is neutral it's not offensive to fish but still you can see it from far far away even when it gets darker so this is one of the best flies definitely in this series with the pheasant tail. I would say that these are my two favorite flies out of those six. Now, without any further ado, let's just hop into tying of the fly uh, shuttlecock emerger. So, as you can see, I have hook in device, placed in device. And this is 2487 barbless in size 14 by Diemco. Uh, for the thread, I'm going to use two threads, light olive UTC in 70 denier. I'm not going to wax it this time because I'm going to use UV glue. And I have some kind of a micro floss here in yellow. It's bright yellow, but when I put some UV over it, it's going to get a little bit darker, almost invisible over this green color. And that's very important. So this is what I have for the ribbing. For the wings, I have some CDC. Now let me show you a couple of things about CDC I like and don't like. This is relatively bad CDC feather. As you can see, those barbs are relatively even along the width 
of the feather or along the length of the feather like so the, the width is more or less uniform and that means that like when you stroke those barbs to the top as you can see like you can tie this feather here but you will not use those barbs down there where on the other side if you have something like this this is what I call, call triangular shape when you stroke all those barbs and you go all the way to the tip as you can see all barbs are collected meaning that you're using more barbs per feather and in return you're using uh, you're not wasting your feather uh, you also can have oval feather the first one I saw I, I, I showed was oval it's this but this one is more rich so this is something I would use probably for stoneflies or something like that the first one that was not so rich is something I would just take a clip uh, something like this and with a clip I would just take it like so insert in dubbing loop and have legs for nymphs or something but let's just get into tying uh, so for shuttlecock emerger or any fly you have to follow some proportions so let's say that this is going to be here head more or less then you have thorax let's go maybe one third of the overall length of this and then the rest is abdomen so I'll start at the border between thorax and the abdomen I can go a tad bit uh, behind okay now when it comes to these curved hooks it's a personal preference where you want to start with them uh, where you want to end the body like you can go deep into the hook or you can go shorter getting the smaller fly on larger hook which in turn can give you higher hook up rate and uh, if you use smaller fly, smaller hook it can open easily on bigger fish but bigger bigger hook won't have that problem now what I will do I'll just cut a piece of thread yellow thread for the ribbing and I'll use thread trap to catch this so let's go so as you can see like I just went under and a pull and as you can see it's aligned here with where I want to stop everything with flat thread I'll counter spin my bobbin holder with flat thread I'll com continue winding around the hook and I'll stop right where where the bend starts and then with flat thread look how wide it is I'll go back if you want your very skinny body you can stop here and continue with your fly what I like to do is I like to add a bit of taper to my flies very often and so I'll go just um, again flat thread is very important because it gives you more control so if I flatten it more like go ahead and go zigzag it will flatten even more it will be almost in invisible taper but if I want I can go like so and overlap my wraps and make this taper as I wrap towards the towards the hook eye and this is more or less what I want as you can see the thread got n more narrow meaning that it's not so flat anymore now I made a video before about how you should spin this uh, ribbing I will spin it clockwise clockwise because the jump will go into the see when I release the tension it goes towards the towards the eye it's not fighting me uh, as opposed to if I one wrap uh, twisted thread counterclockwise as I go wrapping it will just jump back and back and back meaning it's going to fight me because I don't want it to fight me I want it to go where I want it to go towards the eye I'll just wrap it nicely like this when you reach the end point you can unravel make it flat again so it's more easily secured we just a couple of wraps secure everything here
and let me do one very small whip finish here. Now, it is important to have this bare hook here, and I'll tell you why in a, when I continue doing this, when I continue tying. Uh, try to cut this as clean as possible because if you have some frayed thread it will show uh, when you do the next step and that's UV glue so I have this UV ready just make a small drop on, on my needle and to distribute it a little bit better I like to go and touching motion all around and then just uh, distribute it along the body as you can see I was mentioning that I the, the the ribs are not so bright anymore they're just like very discreetly uh, discolored green so they actually got their olive color from below and I even get this 3D effect because like when you go over later when I obviously uh, use UV uh, you can feel that the rough surface of those ribs just a nice touch nothing that fish will care about but like it's a nice touch now uh, when this is ready I'll reattach my thread and I was saying bear hook I like to start my thread on bear hook here because I think it holds better than the UV it's not scientifically proved obviously but it's something that I think okay now also in one of my recent videos I discussed the size of the feather so if you if you want to compare look at the thickness of rakis on this feather it's almost like a hook and then look at this it's very thin um, it's compatible literally it's compatible you have smaller feather I have two here and it's very high barb density so I'll just use two and in most instances instances I will use two because for these kind of emergers I will use them in slower waters so, so I don't need too rich fly uh, what I want is I want so this is my wing length overall hook so this is the length between eye and the bent this is the length I want and if I catch it here and if I tie here I will be short I will be short by this distance here so I need to extend that exactly by the thorax and I'll go back now I'll twist the thread Counter spin the bobbin and let me see where I'm at. So this is the time you can check everything. Everything looks fine. Now pull on it, see if it's if you caught it properly I mean with so many wraps you should I like to cover it so I don't have those barbs visible you can definitely go away with less wraps here because like even if you leave those barbs visible and you go over them with the dubbing you won't have them oops I need to twist this a little bit you won't have them loosen no okay now I will use my squirrel dubbing mix for the thorax and here like look at this amount it's like a ridiculously small amount I don't want too much I want it very sparse because this is delicate fly and I'll go a little bit back because I want this hump to be uh, visible now when I have this hook here like almost the head length I'll stop no need more now what I like to do is I like to stroke back those 
Now I can see that I may need a little bit more dubbing here, but it's okay. Just yeah, it's okay. I'm I want my thread to be near the near dubbing here, not near the head. So I'll push everything, stroke those barbs, and then with my nails I'll catch the eye of the hook and use my nails as a guide uh, for my thread. So two reps. I'm sure everything is on the top. I pull up as you can see. No need more. And that's it. Two reps here to remove those barbs, and that's it. Now, what finish knot? I'll tell you something about this fly and how I fish it and why I tie it the way I do. I prefer this fly without tail uh, because I don't think tail makes sense on these flies. Why? If you put tail, especially if it's Coque de Lyon, it's going to be here and it's going to support your fly and it will make some resistance against water here so your fly will can not always can actually lay with wings like this and tail like this meaning that the surface of the water will be as such you want this fly to be in water like this so you you want the whole body submerged from the hook eye down so what you see is those wing this wing and what fish sees is a reflection of these wings a little bit but most importantly it will see nicely colored body nice prominent thorax and you can add some legs here if you want but i like everything to be as hydrodynamic as possible so it, it penetrates surface more easily hence the varnished body not dubbed body or something else of course you can do bo dub body or pheasant tail which is amazing but this is my way to go beca because it's a bit heavier and it will pull the fly down easily so you will only see those wings always fish it on as thin tippet as you can as long as you can because it will give you more natural drift and more delicate presentation if you have super long uh, tippet it's almost impossible for most casters, fishermen, to straighten it out, especially with light flies. And what it means is that you will get those curves all the way to the from the leader to the fly, so the tippet will be all in curves, which will uh, give you more natural drag free drift for a longer time until those curves get straight. And that's it. So guys, if you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe and see you next week. And most importantly, Alexander, thank you very much for sending your flies. Just continue doing what you're doing because your flies are amazing.